What's up guys? I'm here to talk about the cultivation theory in communication. To start, we need to understand what communication is. So, communication is part of our daily lives and with media and technology, it has become even more prevalent. So, the cultivation theory explores the impact of media and its role in shaping the viewer's perception of reality. Let's start with a brief history about the cultivation theory. This theory was first introduced by George Gerbner between the 60s and 70s from the last century. So Gerbner and other researchers wanted to understand how media influenced people's views of reality as part of the Cultural Indicators Project, a long-term research project aimed at testing the content and the effects of television. Over the time, the theory evolved to encompass a broader range of media effects. Cultivation refers to a global shaping of our perception of social reality through repeated exposures to media messages. First, cultivation refers to the global shaping of our perceptions of social reality through repeated exposure to media messages. Second, there are two types of messages that contribute to this cultivation. Mainstream messages, which are the dominant messages in society, and resonance messages, which are media messages that are especially connected and significant to individuals' personal experiences. Third, cultivation theory assumes that audiences are passive and critical receivers of media messages, which means that they are more susceptible to their effects. Fourth, mainstreaming refers to a phenomenon where viewers from diverse backgrounds and experiences develop comparable attitudes and beliefs after a long exposure to prevalent media messages. On the other hand, resonance refers to a situation where media messages reinforce viewers' personal experiences, resulting in a more pronounced cultivation effect. Now, empirical research has been conducted to explore effects of the cultivation theory. Researchers use several methods, such as surveys, experiments, and analysis, to understand the difference between media consumption and what else do you think? Yeah, attitudes or beliefs. Some findings suggest that long-term exposure to media can shape viewers' perceptions of the world, leading to a more purple and violent views of reality. However, the theory's assumptions about audience passivity and its lack of focus on individual differences in media consumption and interpretation have been questioned by many critics through the time. Despite these limitations, the cultivation theory has practical implications for both media producers and consumers. Producers can take responsibility for the messages they create and consider their impact on audiences. Further, this theory has practical applications in advertising campaigns and public health messages to counter negative media messages. It's also been used to understand the influence of media on social issues such as discrimination. The cultivation theory is an important concept in communication that helps us understand how media shapes our perceptions of reality. By examining any key concepts, empirical research, and real-world applications of this theory, we can see its significance and potential for future research and theory development. And to make this presentation more trustable, here you have the references used.